Hello, everybody, and welcome to an episode of Over Under. I am your host, Ahmed Ismail. Joining me... AJ. AJ. This is what they call me. Is it? Sometimes. It's the first time I'm hearing it. Oh. And this is the show Over Under, where we talk about movies, TV shows, and not so much lately, but video games. Sometimes. And today we have another installment of Does It Hold Up? And I believe it will. Do you? Yes. You don't even know the rating? I don't. Yeah. So it might need to be pushed up a bit. Or we'll pushed see. down. We'll see. Oh. I haven't seen the rating either. Okay. And today we're going to be talking about Transporter, starring Jason Statham. The that movie that put him on the map? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, This movie came out in 2002. We're going to be taking a look at the rating and deciding if we think it holds up or not. And so the rating for the movie Transporter, Transporter has been given a rating of 54%. Now, for our first-time viewers... Yes, my favorite part. Please, please explain. If we agree with the rating, think it's properly rated, we hit the green buzzer. If we disagree for any reason, thinking it's overrated or underrated, we hit the red one. Transporter, 54%. Yes. Do you agree or disagree with this rating? In three, two, one. Hmm. <clears throat> Explain yourself. Jason Statham in this movie showed us what he's capable of in terms of his own stunts. Uh, I'm not saying he did all the stunts, but he did a lot of those stunts. Maybe he did. I don't know. Why do you hate it? Why do you think it deserves it? such a low rating? You still haven't told rating? me why you like it. I like it because what's not to like? Start to finish, it's like a whole action movie with Jason Statham. One of the best at it. Come on. But was he back then? That's the birth of the Jason Statham we know of today. Mm. Wasn't for that again. Wasn't for that kickstart wouldn't have been where he is today. He is a solo leading man now. Okay. And a great catch for any franchise that gets him. Right. That's how he ended up in that great Fast and Furious movie. I think Fast and Furious got worse after Jason Statham came in, but but it had nothing to do with Jason Statham. <laughs> had nothing to do with Jason Statham. It had everything to do with The Rock. <laughs> Maybe. Come on. Maybe. Okay. Um, see, the reason I don't like this movie is because Jason Statham wasn't going bald with dignity. <laughs> so you're saying... Um, <laughs> no, 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 okay. no, no, no. All right. Yeah. It, it, look, it was a fun, cheesy, early 2000s action movie. Yes. I watched it again last night. Did right? you? I did. Okay. Right. Uh, it's this guy who transports goods, uh, sometimes people, which was, you know, the whole thing in the movie. And, you know, has all these rules, doesn't ask questions. He's this cool, like, loner dude that somehow knows how to fight. He was in the military, has this nice backstory that they established in a really good way. He has this, I really love the detective character. Yeah, he's right? funny, and I like that he stuck around for the sequels. I, I like that he knew kind of what was going on and kind of let it fly under the radar mm -hmm. until the end where he needed to really confront the character of Jason Statham. Right. Right? Frank. I think the acting in this movie was really, really, really bad. Aside from Statham's. Aside from Jason Statham. Yeah, because they're all like Z-listers. Right, <laughs> but that doesn't change the fact I that... Like, we're talking about the movie based on its own merits. We're right. not talking about what Jason Statham did afterwards. We're not talking about the sequels. We're talking about this one specific movie. Right. The acting was terrible. I can't defend it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the soundtracks were horrific. That's the last thing on my mind the in a cheesy action movie to think about the soundtrack. But I think it had certain good, decent No, music. no, no, no. Go back and watch the movie again. The okay. soundtracks were terrible, right? The, 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 it didn't even match the tone of the movie. Okay. Right? The tone of the scenes that it was in. Mm. There were... Certain scenes where I like the transition of the sound okay. in the movie. Like, 
uh, in the first action scene where he goes into the house and starts attacking them and steals a car. There's non-diegetic movie uh, music playing. Right. And to people who don't know, non-diegetic is sound in a movie that is not coming from the scene. But then when he gets in the car, it switches to diegetic and he turns off right. the radio. I really liked that little transition. There were certain that touches. Was, I was, that's the part I was uh, reminiscing about. Right. That part, the music there. Yeah, yeah. that part was, nice. was cool. Yeah. But there are certain things that just like, I don't know. I don't think early 2000s action movies can hold up because of the cheesiness of them. True. Like, However, this wasn't as cheesy as the other ones. But don't get me wrong. If we, if like, because I did watch it back then, and back then it was the coolest thing in the world to me. It was the greatest See, movie that's ever. That's where you visit an old movie. Right. But you get spoiled it's kind of like when you were you know? a kid and you had a certain candy you liked, and then when you grow up, you try it again. It doesn't taste as good as you remember it. That's, oh, that's how I felt watching this movie. Science. And that's why it's like, does it hold up or not? Yeah. Uh, that's why, to me, the movie really didn't hold up. And 54% is still, you know, a passing grade, right? I mean, I don't know what college it would get you <laughs> in, but certainly not. Um. But um, there is one thing I really did like about this movie. And um, Because they kind of stepped out of the norm, which is, you know how every 80s, 90s, early 2000s, even early 2010s action movie, the main guy has to fight like 17 people by himself, right? And that's not what Jason... And always wins. Does in this No, he does it, but they did it in such a creative way in the uh, garage. Right. When he spills all the the oil oil on himself, and and so they can't grab him. Mm-hmm. And that kind of made sense to me, and it I really sold appreciated that. the whole that. premise of being able to defend yeah. yourself against that many. Yeah, exactly. There were certain parts of the movie that made no sense because in some scenes, Jason Statham's character, Frank, was... I'm just going to keep saying Jason Statham because just saying it is fun to say. His, like n- Jason his name Statham. is awesome, Jason right? Statham. Yeah, um, yeah Frank... Um, there are certain scenes where he'll like kill the bad guys and certain scenes where he'll hold back and not do that. Right. And it he was very this, inconsistent. Uh, he has this split personality where he's sometimes he's Batman, sometimes he's not. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it, it, there was no explanation to it. Yeah. Like there are certain people who would shoot them up and certain people would just be like, no, and just shoots the wall. It, it didn't feel warranted. Um, the twist of the movie, which is the the character of Lai, when it turns out, oh no, her dad isn't in the container. He's actually the one behind everything. Felt unearned. I didn't care. Mm, yeah. Okay. It just gave us more of a plot, I guess. You know, it's like we really thought about this. <laughs> yeah, but it was just also like it wasn't interesting to me. Like the only like the action scene saved the movie. That was it. The plot I was I think boring. I like the concept of having this individual where they transport uh, certain packages, no question asked, uh, no questions asked. And how did the guy know he opened the package? How did the guy know that Jason the, the guy the, the bad guy that set him up and put a bomb in his car? Mm. And then when he came back and attacked him and all that and asked him why you tried to blow him up, he was like, because you opened the package. You broke your own rule. It's like, how did you know, though? Um, that's a good question. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I disagreed because I would rate it more. What would you What would you rate it? In the seventies, I think it's a sweet spot. Seventies. Yeah. Okay. You don't feel. I think I think it's cool at fifty four percent. Okay. Fair. It's not a terrible movie. It's just not good. Well, let's hear. Uh, can we hear from the people? No, we cannot. We cannot. We cannot hear from the people. All right. So what are we going to do? We're... You messed up my yeah, whole flow. Yeah, I know. Mm. But, yeah, that's all we have for our opinions. Uh, I agreed with the rating. Thought it didn't hold up. AJ disagreed. We're just going to take a quick break and then come back with some facts that you didn't know about the movie. Stay tuned.
And we're back with a segment we like to call What You Don't Know. This is where we look up facts that we may not have known about Transporter One. Thank you to our producer, Hajar. Gracias. One of the falling embers from the house explosion hit Jason Statham and set what remains of his hair on fire. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Is that why he went bald? <laughs> Is that why he's like full on, like forget about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but but that see that hap- <laughs> See, me and Hassan discussed this in a previous episode. Okay. He gets injured on every set. Like he How he, much is his insurance policy at this point? You know, for for a professional swimmer, yeah. He drowned in the Expendables 2. <laughs> on the set. Wow. <laughs> He was stuck in a car, but you're making still it harder and harder yeah. every day, man, to be a fan. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, the second fact that we have is that when uh, Lai is going through his stuff in the movie, she's going through his pictures and all that. There's a picture of the character of Frank as a child holding a monkey. Okay. Apparently, that's a picture of Jason Statham in real life as a kid holding a monkey for some reason. That's I don't know. That's awesome <laughs> when they bring real yeah. life into it. Okay. I thought it looked kind of like Jason Statham when I was watching so it, it last night. Real. Yeah. So when the character of Lai is cooking breakfast for Frank, mm-hmm. right, she accidentally burns her fingers, then touches her ear. This is actually a method used to help cool a burn as the earlobe helps to disperse heat. Why didn't I know that? I have no idea, and I don't believe it at all. I think Haja just made it up, but... But why don't we just put it to the test in one episode where we burn ourselves and then, no? Comment on <laughs> our show uh-huh. if you'd like to see one of us burn their finger and then touch their earlobe. It's a science experiment. <laughs> I think we'll get... We're just going to change the whole format of the show. Pretty much. All right. So the last fact that we have is that Jason Statham learned how to hotwire a car just for one scene. He said... Would have liked to know when I was about 15. Oh, wow. Okay. Here's the thing. It's like, that's so unnecessary. Why did he have to learn how to do that? Just Because he had to do it on camera. Okay, but he could have faked it. It, They just showed his hands. He could have used the stunt double. He could have done any. Why do you have to be so extra, Mr. Statham? One word. Realism. And that's a wrap for today's episode. Wrap it up. <laughs> that is a wrap for today's episode of Over or Under. This is Ahmed Lusme. And this guy from Clackett's is hosting for some reason. And that is all for tonight's episode. We'll see you next time. Drive safe and take care. <laughs>